Hey there. I wanted to pass along some tips and tricks I've developed to enjoy a great smokeless fire here when I'm home on the deck and also when I'm on the road camping. And I've optimized this system to use no firewood, only wood pellets. I originally got this smokeless fire pit because I wanted something I could take with me when I'm camping in my converted minivan camper so that I could have a fire wherever it's allowed and not be restricted to whether or not there's a preset ring or grill. This one is one of the smaller ones in the 17 inch size, but it's the largest one that I could find that also fits in the cargo box on top of the van. So the first question is, why use a smokeless pit? Well, the answer is obvious and it's right in the name. A pit like this produces very little smoke, so nobody gets smoke in the face, and there's no smoky smell left on your clothes. This feature really changes the experience of sitting by a fire because you can enjoy it as long as you want to and not be driven off by smoke in the face or smoke saturating into your clothes. So the second question is, why use pellets? What's wrong with regular firewood? Well, there's nothing wrong with firewood and these smokeless fire pits do a great job burning regular split wood. But there are two practical issues. The first is getting the wood and possibly also cutting it and splitting it. When I'm camping, many areas have restrictions against bringing in outside firewood to prevent the spread of tree diseases and pests. So in the past, I've often had to try to find firewood after getting to my camping area, and that's just another chore at the end of a long day. With pellets, I can bring them with me from home because there's no restriction on transporting wood pellets. There's also no sawing, splitting, or looking for kindling. I usually buy a 40 pound bag of pellets for about $7, and then I repackage them into several gallon size Ziploc bags for really easy and clean transportation. And then there's the cost of pellets compared to wood. These are each about five pounds of wood, so it's about an equal fuel value. However, in my area, a 20 pound bundle of firewood is about $8. So on an equal weight basis, pellets are half the cost of firewood. Now, if you're suspicious about what's actually in pellets, it's really easy to find pellets that have no additives, just wood. Pellets are made using recycled wood from the timber and wood product industries. The wood is first ground up and then extruded through a hot pressurized die to form the pellet shape. And it's actually the natural lignans in the wood which soften during the process and it forms a binder which holds the pellet together and it forms that glossy coating. I always make sure that the pellets that I buy are clearly marked as containing 100% wood but I get another benefit of pellets when I use this fire pit at home on the deck because pellets don't shoot hot embers out of the fire. The reason that wood, like this, pops and throws sparks when you burn it in a fire is because wood always contains moisture. And when a large piece of wood gets hot in the fire, local moisture pockets form steam which build up pressure and eventually burst and they can shoot out red hot embers. An open fire really wouldn't be safe on a deck like this, which is made of wood and wood composite. But I can burn pellets because they're so small and evenly shaped that they don't spark or throw any embers. Here's a closer look at this fire pit and the modifications that I made, which make burning pellets a lot more effective. This is the 17 inch fire pit from East Oak and it only has three parts. The main chamber, Underneath has air inlet holes on the bottom and all around the perimeter. And inside it's a two wall structure where the inner wall is separated from the outer wall, but air can get between the two through here. And then it comes out these holes all around the upper inside edge. And it's air coming out of these holes that makes the smokeless function possible. Essentially the air is providing combustion air to reburn the smoke. And then it also has this two-part tray where the underside uh, catches the ash and the wood or the pellet fuel sits on top of that and it slides right in. But the problem with pellets is that some of the pellets are gonna be small enough 
to actually fall through these holes and they'll collect in the pan below and if they burn at all they'll probably end up just sort of smoldering. The other problem is that the pellets are, are approximately or slightly larger than the size of a lot of these holes. So what they're going to end up doing is blocking the airflow so the fire is not going to burn very well because it's not going to get enough air. So I need to think of a way to get the pellets up off the bottom of this tray so that there's free airflow through the fuel bed. The solution is to use a layer of stainless steel mesh. This will lay on top of the tray and get the pellets off the bottom. So I'm going to cut it to size and also cut a hole in the middle to fit around the ring in the tray. So here's that mesh piece that I cut. I ended up going with two layers of the mesh and I folded in the corners. It's a little darkened here because I've used it in the fire a few times, but it just lays right in and it does a great job of keeping the pellets off the bottom. Now one last thing that I added was this five inch stainless steel mixing bowl in which I've drilled nine holes. And this sets down in the middle and the purpose of that is twofold. For one thing, it's to keep the pellets sort of a little more toward the perimeter so that as the smoke is generated off the pellets, they're closer to these sidewalls where they're available to be reburned. And the holes are so that there's a constant source of combustion air coming up the middle so that any smoke that tries to escape from the middle also has a higher chance of being reburned. I'm going to show you how to put together a simple pellet fire starter and we'll get this fire going. It's really easy to make an effective fire starter for a pellet fire using cotton rounds, which have been dipped in melted wax. These are available at the dollar store. And for the wax, you can use any kind of candle wax that you may have laying around. This is just the stump of an old pillar candle. You could even use a scented candle if you want to give it that little something extra. So the way I make these is I melt the wax in an old tomato sauce can on a double boiler system. So put a couple of inches of water in the pan put it on the stove and you can easily melt the wax. Now optionally you can add some paraffin lamp oil to the mixture and this will make the fire starter have a little bit of a more robust flame. It's not required but it does make it a little bit better. All right the wax is all melted. I've got everything I need laid out on some parchment paper. Time to just start dipping them. So this is so easy. You just dip them in the wax let the excess run off and just lay them out. So in 10 minutes, I've made 20 of those fire starters. Now the key to getting this kind of fire starter to really work well is to tear it in half. So you make a couple of creases back and forth give it a tear. And what that creates is hundreds of tiny little wicks to make a large flame out of a small source. Let's give it a try. Oh yeah, this will work fine. All right, it's time to get a fire going. Now I wouldn't want to use this smokeless fire pit directly on the deck because the bottom can get fairly hot but I happen to have this old fire bowl that I haven't used in years because it's just too smoky and I really can't use it safely on this deck. But when I put these two together, it becomes a completely safe system for having an open pellet fire right here without any additional protection. Even with a large fire inside the smokeless pit, the underside of the bowl is only slightly warm and the deck boards don't heat up at all. I put in about three pounds of pellets to start, which makes, which makes a bed of about one to two inches deep. Then I'm going to add four fire starters. Now these are each 
there's these it's actually two fire starters torn in half so there's going to be four four segments and i just tuck these in around the fuel bed So in just a few minutes, I've got a really nice fire going. One really cool thing about a smokeless fire pit is that the air holes around the top create sources for lots of additional fingers of flame, which are really kind of mesmerizing to watch. This fire is putting out a lot of nice heat and there's essentially no smoke coming off of it. So the initial load of three pounds of pellets will probably last about 15 or 20 minutes, and then I'm gonna to have to add another scoop of pellets. It's really helpful to have a long-handled pellet scoop like this one. I tried to find one on Amazon, but I really didn't find what I was looking for. So I went to Ikea, and I saw this potato masher, and I thought, hmm, well this would work, except this handle is too short to really get over the fire without it getting uncomfortably hot on my hand. Now this, handle is pretty long but it's got this hinge on it which is useless so what I did was I cut this handle off and I also cut this masher part off and then I moved this handle to this side and bolted it down and what I got was this long handled pellet scoop that's the perfect length to be long enough to add pellets to the fire without my hand getting uncomfortably hot So when the flames start to die down, it's time to add another scoop of pellets because you don't want the flames to go out because then if you add a lot of new pellets, sometimes that will smother the fire. So before that happens, I'm gonna take a scoop and pour it in. And the bowl that's in the bottom of this really helps because all I have to do is pour the pellets on top of the bowl and they just sort of scatter in all directions. So I don't have to worry about evenly distributing them. The bowl takes care of that. And then the hot coals are going to reignite the flames and pretty soon they're all back again. This fire's putting off so much heat, I got to back up a little bit. <laughs> uh, whew. That's nice. And if you want a smaller flame, just add fewer pellets. The great thing about a pellet fire is that you can really control the amount of flames that you have by just adding the specific amount of pellets that you want. So it's getting a little bit low, I'll just add a few more. And if you're like me, you know that a fire is more fun if you can mess with it. And actually, the act of adding scoops and seeing those flames come back to life gives me the feel of having an active role in this fire without so much that it becomes a hassle. It's actually kind of therapeutic watching the flames rise after adding a scoop. One thing to keep in mind about any smokeless fire pit is that they're not truly smokeless. There will still be some smoke coming off the fire and you probably see a little bit coming off of this one, but the difference is it's just so much less than a regular open fire. And that's for two reasons. First is the, the different airflow that reburns the smoke around the top. But the second is the, the shape of the fire pit directs the airflow from the bottom up through the top. And so what smoke there is typically gets blown overhead, either straight up or over your head, so that you don't get bothered by it. And it really does make a difference. All right, that's it for this episode. Keep on seeking those moments that add a little more sweetness to life, and I'll catch you in the next one.